Right guys, we found our hole. We've got an axe. Remember, we are trained professionals. Please do not try this at home because it can be dangerous. If you do want to go in the cold water, go in the cold water, but be sure you're with a supervised person like Tom or myself. And again, do not try this at home. One hole. Oh, look at that, boys. Ah! Okay, that's scary. Holy crap. Hey right, guys, so that's two holes perfectly cut. Remember, if you want to cut holes, use an axe or something. Don't use your hands. Don't be silly. What better way than to get some recovery in the most beautiful setting you can imagine? This is a tropical paradise, but with snow. Sometimes I like to talk a lot when I don't want to do something. Right, you know what? I'll do it. He's right. going to shut up. We're going to get in. I'm going to last one minute. He's going to last probably 30 minutes. You can listen to him chant. I'll get my kilt back on and I'll go home. We're going to get wet and cold. All you guys sitting at home watching this. Woohoo! I hope you guys enjoy this because this is for your entertainment. Are you not entertained? The next time we come down here, Tom, our cameraman, hasn't been in yet. Every guy we filmed with and do stuff always comes in the cold. Write in the comments. If we get more than 10 comments saying Tom in the cold water, Tom will be in the cold water in the next episode. Yes. Hey! Ice swimming. Feeling alive. When entering the ice, be prepared for the shock of your life because you're going to be energized, invigorized, and revitalized from the cold water. Hey, I'm going to. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now we need to get down because. If <laughs> So first challenge is done. So we're in the ice hole. We're feeling cold. We know what it feels like. It's cold water. Of course it's going to be cold. Is it a struggle? Yes, it's a struggle. But what do we do with struggles? We surpass them. We overcome. We will beat the struggle. Do we go in? Do we dunk? Of course we do. Because cold water makes us happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Tommy. If you're looking for a, a shot of adrenaline in your life, what do you, what do you, what do you want to do? What do you want to do when these 22 inch pythons come for you? Get down, Tom. Come on. Yes, big man. Now stay under, stay. Get. How's I just feel it, Tommy. Because my arms are so. It's because my arms are cold. Why don't you try and put your arms in? Hi, you shut up, will you? Oh, wow, this is a life, guys. <laughs> right, who remembers the best way to dry off? If you don't have a towel, this is what they do in the SES. We roll in the snow, that's how we dry off, don't we? And what that does, that gets all the water molecules away. I'm dry, I'm warm, I am at one with Mother Nature. <laughs> Britain's strongest man. It's gonna be easy compared to this. Here we are, <laughs> the fridge today. Axle cleaning press for me. So this is the last press day before Britain's Strongest Man, going up to a heavier single, and then gonna drop it down to 150, 155, and do reps with that. And we'll just take it from there. Yeah, we were down in Aberdeen over the weekend at a uh, Aberdeen Health and Wellness Festival, which was really nice. So any of you that are watching, it was nice to chat. If we saw you down there, thanks for coming along. Oh my! Oi, oi, oi! Hey, caramba! Next up, 
some cables, goblet squats, offset push-ups and some banded pressing. Oh yeah, posterior expansion. Right, let's get it done. Come on. So as I said at the start, going up to heavier singles, so 170, 180, and then back down to 150, 155 for some reps. And that is my last axle session. So with that being said, let's get it. Did a couple of singles worth 120. Um, I find with axle sometimes it takes me a little minute just to find that groove. My my last set might be better than my first set. Um, it just takes a little second just to find that kind of that flow. I'm feeling good so far. That 120 is nice, so as it should be. What should we go for? Let's just go for 160. Just yolo it. Yolo, let's go. Yeah, nice and comfortable, so cleaning was quite good in that. I cleaned it really quite quite high up in my, my chest. So like normally when I I clean it. Um, clean it, and then I do a double tap, like a double pop, and then up. I didn't actually need it on that one, which was nice. So, yeah, that's 160, so just a wee YOLO and just go 180. What do you think? Doesn't matter what you think, because I'm going to do it anyway, so. Uh, um, yeah, so I'll put 180 on, just to get, like, that 100% reassurance, you know that. Get 180. The 160 is like, you don't even need to think about it then, really. That's what that kind of says to myself. We are... I don't know. We are just a figment of our imagination, aren't we? Who would have thought until I imagined many years ago, why don't I become a strong man? That would be cool. And then the imagination... Is the first step of reality. Yeah. So that was kind of top set, so that was at 180. I did two singles there. Just the first one, the clean wasn't quite 100%, so it kind of almost got caught here a little bit. I didn't have my arms wide enough, I think, look at, well, look back at it, but that's what I, I think. Um, so then as I tried to clean it, it got caught up a little bit. But I managed to flick it up again and get it, so 
It, the pressing feels really good. And um, the second one, that caught me off guard, actually. That was, like, from there, like, flicked it right up. Again, just taking that little second, remembering, you know, getting that program, like that, like cues, like what, from here, stand up a little straighter, clean it up, use traps, you know, those little things just 100% 100% dialed in. Because um, I think my, my cleaning stuff has changed quite a bit from the last time I did it. Um, so yeah, feeling, feeling pretty good. And now we're going to drop it down to 155 and do some reps with that. And I guess this, we are just chatting about a minute ago, you know, going up to the, the one rep heavy, you know, your, your CNS, your central nervous system is kind of like a bit fried. So now coming back down and doing some reps at a lighter weight when you're, this is my thought process anyway. So your, your CNS is still kind of fried a wee bit. And if you can still do that, um, you're kind of mimicking almost like comp environment as well for me, because um, you're not going to be going in fresh all the time, and with Giants live shows, they are very fast, so just want to prove to myself, you know, that everything's everything's going okay, so, so, so far, so good, yeah, quite happy. <laughs> so that was Axel there, so that was a couple of reps at 180 um, and five reps with 155. Not as as snappy um, as, it, as it normally is, but I think that's just because it's the last week of, of prep, so, you know, everything takes its toll and um, just tired and, and sore. Uh, but really happy I got that done. Oh, God, it's tough. Um, so no, it was good, shoulders still feeling nice, no aches or pains, knees are feeling good. Um, so like I said, that's Axel done. And then last strength phase of training today is strict log from the rack. So three threes. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So we're getting there guys, slowly but surely. Oh, let me make sure none of you under false impressions or false illusions or whatever. It's really not easy to do this. Year in, year out, consistently training. It's really not easy, so you have to really enjoy it or be, or enjoy being in pain, whatever that word is, or just make sure that's your passion. Um, you know, I think that's the, the key to things, isn't it? Find something that you're passionate about and Let's see. Find something you're passionate about and make it your job, and you'll never work a day in your life. Whatever the saying is, I don't know. I know it looks like I'm struggling, and I know it looks like it's um, it's it's tough, and it is tough. But I genuinely really enjoy training at the moment, and I said it before, but it was getting a bit kind of tedious last year. Um, I don't know for whatever reason. So you know that's why I wanted to make a change and. And here we are, back to, back to training. It's just nice when you get that buzz. You know, you, like runners talk about the runner's high and, you know, I guess like CrossFit and endurance and all that, you know, you get that high. And it's the same when we're weightlifting and lifting heavy weights. When you, when you lift something and you, you do it, it's like five weeks before, six weeks before you start. 
started the training block or whatever, you couldn't even attempt it, you know, it was like so unachievable. And then by the end of that six week, or that two month block, whatever, you might not quite be there yet, but you're getting closer. And that's the, that's the addiction to, to lifting weights, I think. And, you know, it goes back to what we're trying to do with the Strength Academy. You know, it's, you know, you don't have to become world's strongest man or compete in strong man or, or do this professionally. But what you can do is really improve your life um, by following a program, by f following a nutrition plan, by changing your mindset, changing whatever it is that you need to change to to immerse yourself in something. Again, it doesn't have to be strong man, but some form of physical activity. I think from, from I'm a man, so obviously, but from a male's point of view, I think that is, is key. You know, we need to really tap into that kind of aggression that we've got, you know, that testosterone and stuff that's in us. We need to kind of tap into that. And, and I think that's really, really good to do in, in this form of, of, of training and lifting and like, being strong, you know. That's why I love it anyway, because it's a test every time. Like in snowing like anything this morning, going out for a swim, it was a test. Coming in here when it's cold, just want to go back to bed, chill the couch. But you come in here, you tick, 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 tick. And then by the end of the day, you kind of go home and you feel good about yourself. And then you wake up tomorrow and then you have to start again, trying to get those little small wins. So I would highly recommend going to the gym. Who knows? Remember, your imagination is the start of your reality. One third. So this is actually the last, this, this log press is the last, um, exercise today so you can see things have like dropped back dramatically so all, all accessories everything's just kind of reined in obviously because of the competition Britain's Strongest Man coming up so accessories the, the nitty gritty stuff you know that's been done um, it's just a, a final kind of push on the, the big stuff Ooh, strong man Right guys, so last one on strict log, I'm going to do 160, so 160 for three reps, which would be nice. I want in 160 to feel really comfortable, you know, again, like I say, when I get it on the shoulders at Britain's, then it's, it's not an issue, so clean it. That's what we're planning. Right, so... So that is log done. Felt actually quite nice. You know, nothing much else to say about that. That's it. Final pressing session done. I guess we'll see you later on in the week. What's happening, guys? A little chalky clock there. Um, so this will be the last time we are in the warehouse before Britain's strongest man. Let's go. A nice uh, session to finish off. Throwing first on the agenda for me. We are doing arm over arm. Um, we've seen a few examples or a few people testing the arm over arm for Britons. So it looks like it's kind of five to six pulls. So we're going to try and set it up. Or I'll try and set it up. So I've got five pulls. Mark that out. Do a few sets, but try and, if it makes sense, better that pull every or better the distance i'm pulling in five big long pulls nice and fast and then that'll be that and then atlas stones just make like do the first two stones three stones just make sure i'm i'm really honed in on that the first two to three stones like really quick so i go kind of gung-ho 
on that. So I think that's where you can make up quite a lot of time in the first three stones. The 180 and 200 kilo stone, heavy, yeah, but it's not a huge amount of time to, to make up on that. Obviously you see one motion in whatever, whatever you're wanting to do, it's fine. But sometimes if you try and one motion it, I find that it can slow you down because it's, a, it's a, such a grind on that heavy one. You're, uh, unless you're Tom, you can just rip it off the floor and smash it. So Tom's just doing the toilet as per. A little bit snowy today, a little bit wet. Apart from that, good week, happy. Baby's coming soon, two weeks. <gasps> anyway, right, warm up. As per, I'll do a couple singles. Sort this bloody whoop thing out, man. I don't even know how it works. I mean, it does, it does help, I guess. I don't know why it helps, but it's not the be all. And I saw an ad for it, someone put an ad out, like, do you want to get jacked? <laughs> like, I went from a, this, this wee English, this English guy, he's like, I went from being a 60 kilo scrawny guy to now look at me now, I'm jacked. And it's all because of this, the whoop thing. I'm like, if that was the case, how amazing would that be if you could just wear one of these and then put on muscle and stuff? Of course, it's not just that. And of course, it's got nothing to do with this. That's rubbish. But anyway, little things, that's what it is. Sorry, I'm chatting too much because I can't be arsed doing this. Anyway, right, so we'll start off. <coughs> also got Big Harry back in the house. Has a, has a, has a. all my heavy stuff so I don't like these sessions um, these light boring sessions so I do like four sets of axle 120 and then like two sets of throw bars two sets of arm over arm I'll probably do some dinny handle um, holds and then stones and that's me done so the worst part of training is the last week and a bit before a competition because you want to go heavy but you can't so, so. sleepy today guys I don't know, it's weird. Closer the lot of guy gets to the coming. I'm not sleeping as well. I don't know if it's more like anxious or like, I don't know if anyone else, obviously, I'm not the only one to have a kid, of course, but any other fathers out there, did that happen to you? Just waking up like constantly through the night and stuff and just making, just making sure Kush is there and I don't know, weird. Athlete, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiator. You will go on my second. Contender ready! That's it, dog and me, boy. Fun fact, tomorrow night, which will be Saturday, going to a big mantra session 
in Inverness. So that'll be fun. About 50 or 60 people going, so that'll be nice. Drums, kirtans, guitars. Feel that positive energy. Positivity and energy. This is uh, the right side, called Strongman Catch. Yeah, I can catch Tommy's back. <laughs> Don't think so. Right, Tommy, you try this, right? You try and catch it, okay? Ready? Don't go full berserk mode on it. <coughs> See, nice. Scaffolders throw. Look at the TikToks. Oh. Right, I got it next time. Guys, this is the Rain Arm Over Arm Challenge brought to you by Stokeman Brothers and Rain. With the Rain Arm Over Arm Challenge, we are going to pull the implement, which is our sled with the sandbags on top, six times. So, Rain have kindly given us some tins of rain because rain are going to be used as the markers. So, this is going to be there where the start is, and then do six pulls and then mark it, and we'll try and beat that. And that will be the Arm Over Arm Challenge complete. <laughs> <laughs> what? what did you do? I felt I slipped and everything. Round one. I didn't even took Harry with me. Oh. <laughs> Ready when you are. Come on. One, two. Come on. Three. Come on, there you go. Four. There you go. Five. One more. Six. Good. Good. That rope. Catch your hands up. Stop. It's the same, it just dragged like about a hundred yards. Now you got Harry the Hurricane. Come on, Harry, here you go. Come on, back into One, come on, two, come on, come on. Three, come on, good. four. Oh, sorry, Harry. Come on, good, two. good pulls, Harry. Oh, easy. easy. 36, yeah. boy. Oof, yeah. That wasn't even six, bro. That's big pulls, big that. Big man's got big pulls on him, yeah? Just kick that. Son of the cold. Shh. Shh. Oh. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. Come on. There you go. Four. Five. One more. Easy. Here, yeah, buddy. Come on. Good. Seven, that was. That was six. I counted. <laughs> you counted it was wrong. like a, it was funny. It was like a lever. <laughs> it was like you let a hand, one hand go. 
That's what's good being about in a rat shit. Seven. That was. That was six. I thought I counted seven, did you? Because six was there and you went seven. Let's have a wee replay. VAR. VAR. Come on. Here you go. That's it. Good two. Come on. Three. Come on. Three, come, come on. on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Squeeze. There you go. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Two more. Look at those pools, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big hazard. Nailed it. Longest puller in the West. So, what have we done? We did two sets with a lighter one. We just put a 130 kilo sandbag on. <coughs> Same principle goes. Six pulls. See what happens. Rain, <coughs> arm over arm. Maximum input. Are you ready? Rain. It's in the game. <coughs> <coughs> There you go, come on, come on, straight back into it, come on, come on, quicker, up, 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 there you go, come on, come on, three, come on, good, four, come on, straight back up, come on, come on, come on, one more big pull, come on, hey buddy, nice, hi. Oh, guys, here we go. In the beautiful banks of Loch Ness, where uh, Mel Gibson was found to shout freedom for the very first time. And yeah, we're just going to go through that. And what do I do when I don't want to do something? Keep talking too much. Right. You ready? You ready, Shawnee boy? Get it done, mate. It's so scary, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's anticipation. It's actually not that bad one. Resilient and happy. What more is there to feel? Hey,
How does Sean feel? I feel pretty f <laughs> Pretty good, like. I'm uh, surprised at how wet this is. I didn't realise it was raining quite as much. Don't look at that. That's football socks in there for anyone wondering. <laughs> feel alive, baby! Right, guys, so. As you've seen yesterday was my last session for British Straws, man. It was a deload. It was different than the kind of heavy, heavy stuff we've been doing. Deloading the last session just to keep the body moving and keep the blood flowing and just to get some, uh, a wee bit of anger out. Not too much anger. I want to keep as much anger and as much like kind of aggression in there as possible. Make sure I have the best uh, form of recovery for the last week. Obviously, it's Saturday. It is one week out from Britain. Strongest man, I've missed the show. It's been two years since I've been here at uh, Britain Strongest Man, sorry, and I'm ready. I'm feeling good. Yeah, what are my thoughts and what are my feelings one week out from Britain's? Honestly, I feel physically the best I've felt in a long, long time. Probably physically I feel the strongest I have, especially on like the deadlifts and the static stuff as well. So that's going to be so good to show people how much I've been working in the background. Mentally, I'm in unbelievable form mentally. I've been really focused on my own, uh, own path and my own kind of lane i'm really just focusing on my training hitting the numbers i need to hit and i've got in my head and a plan that I, what i need to hit on the day and if i hit them i know that i'm going to be able to win britain straw as man but yeah like i said every event feels amazing training's been feeling really good my recovery has been feeling unbelievable as well i've been doing some epic hot and cold stuff epic cold a lot more like which throws my absolute balls off myself and luke have been a bit more together than this last few days as well because we're not going to be training, we're not training heavy and so we're just going to use that kind of positive energy that we have. Monday, Tuesday we have maybe one or two more deloads and then I'm away to a lot more like with Sinead and my two best mates James and Sean. I always kind of go on a rich show sometimes when I do Giants live shows, I always like to go down a day or two before just so I forget about like, you know, business life or forget about kind of strawman and just have two days where I'm just totally chilled out and I'm going to Loch Lomond which is a beautiful place and just chill out and spend time with the people that I love and then I'm going to be making my way down to Sheffield Friday morning, chill out Friday then get the job done Saturday but yeah like I said I feel 100% mentally, I feel 100% physically so all it is to do now is just to make sure I get through this week, maybe annoy Luke a wee bit and uh, joke with him and I'll we'll spend some time with him and get some good energy going between us and then we get down to Britain's and I cannot wait to put on a show. How do you pass the time? Like, what do you do just to, just to chill out? Uh, you get to get bored, uh, or do you, do you enjoy this? I mean, period? for me, this is the hardest time for prep because the, the reason of a deload is to try to just, you know, you just go through the movements a wee bit, but it's to also enhance recovery. For example, when I'm deloading, I'll maybe hit like a 120 push press and it feels so easy and you feel, in your mind, you want to go, I want to hit 160, I want to hit 180. And when you can't, it just builds up aggression as well. It really helps me build up aggression. It really helps me build up that, like, I want to rip someone's head off by the time the week's done. And that really then helps you on the Saturday when you're performing. That's what I'm getting to already. I have actually only just finished my event session yesterday, but because it wasn't he heavy and I wasn't satisfied with the weights, I'm here now on Saturday and I'm agitated. I'm like, oh, and I've not really felt that. And when I do, when I get that feeling, it means it's a good, it's a good sign. So... I mean, I've got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, six days to not kill anyone, six days to get myself focused. So I bought myself an Xbox and I can take take it out on Call of Duty, take it out on FIFA. I'm not an angry person, but getting that extra aggression and means that I'm 100 my, you know, I'm 100% ready to go. For me as an athlete, is I concentrate on my own thing. I know if I can do everything right, I'll be first place in that podium. If Luke does everything right, I know that he can be second place and the rest, they can fight out like that. But I know that if, I, if I'm 100%, it doesn't matter what anyone else does, I'll win it. And then if Luke's 100%, that, that I've seen Luke in training, the way his mindset shift, the way his coach has kind of got him dialed in now, if he puts that performance in and his hard work he's putting into the training, no one will beat, no one will, uh, beat Luke to second place. So that's just it. Let everybody else do the talking and I just want to work hard and prove that you know I'm the best in Britain. Okay, guys, so training is all done. We thought we'd do a little catch-up. I also said last time, We'll maybe show you where the baby's going to be sleeping and stuff. So we'll go up to uh, the baby's room. There's Kush. Not long now. So we'll pop upstairs. There's a wee, that was quick. We got that frame. So that was the first scan um, of the wee man. So 
that was a, a lady in Elgin. We went to a private scan and she gave us some photos and stuff. So, um, yeah, it was nice. So up here, so we haven't done actually too much to it really. We thought we're going to keep the bed. We've got a really big bed. It's a really comfortable bed. Um, we've got the cot here. So actually, this is really nice. This is from the Scottish government. So the Scottish government actually give you a, a baby box. So with the box is a cot, they give you baby grows, nappies, all different bits and pieces. So it's free. It's in the cupboard here. Um, so you can see the wee man's clothes all lined up, which is pretty wild. That's Hulk. That's really crucial. She's his wife alive. I don't know why she's going to give that to the wee chap. And like that's like all his little baby suits and that. Look at that. It's mad, isn't it? But it's been really nice. We've got a lot of stuff from, you know, you guys watching, you've sent a lot of stuff, which has been really nice. And like friends and family as well. Um, so I don't think we've bought much clothes, really. It's so like with this one as well, you can colour, so this is like the tree of life, so you can colour that in. I think Cushy's added some bits and pieces, but you get so much free stuff from the, the government, which is, you know, just do's and don'ts. You know, at least we can say, I'm not going to get into it, I don't like governments, whatever. The government did a good thing, so. Um, and then, yeah, so like I said, this this is, like, a baby Stoltman, yeah. Someone knitted that for us, which was really nice. But we've decided to keep this bed just to see how things go, you know, with, the, with the, the little man. You know, the hope is we've got a bedside cot next door is it? Uh, Cushy, my, our room, my room. So we've got a bedside uh, cot there. He's going to stay with us for the first little while. But we're quite easy over, you know. You see, we're planning this, planning that, but you just have to go with the flow. We're not, like, stressing too much about things, but it's nice to have an option, you know, if Cushy needs to stay in here with him, if Cushy is able to breastfeed and stuff. The need for me, because I can't like get my milk working, so because I'm a man, you know, and I can't produce milk. So um just the way it is. So um my use will be probably minimal for the first little while. The office is five minutes away, the gym's five minutes away. So I'll pop down there, do my training. And then if Cushy, you know, Cushy will be getting back into the gym training and stuff, so then I'll look after the little guy and then Cushy can go and do whatever. And again, that's that's the plan. I'm sitting here with no kids um, saying, oh, it should be easy. I mean, I don't see any um, issues at all. But that's the exciting thing, you know, we're, we're going to be learning as we go along. So um, super excited. Let's chat a little bit about Britons. You know, we decided to do this like raw YouTube series because we wanted to showcase, you know, what we do in training because I think before a lot of it was edited very heavily and you know we didn't maybe show a lot of the stuff but I think it's just cool it's something that both Tom and I like to watch you know the the nitty gritty of training and I think training has gone really well <clears throat> I've said numerous times that I'm really enjoying my training and I find that um, you can see from my philosophical chats that I do you know it's really opened me to a different way of thinking and it's no coincidence that it's all happening, you know. Now, the wee man's coming and, you know, I'm looking at different things and training allows me to be more open and allow me to be open into different thoughts and different thought processes, which is nice. But I genuinely feel the best I've felt going into Britain's Strongest Man, which is which is really nice. You know, when I saw the, the events, I was like, oh, events aren't the best. I'm not really overly excited about them. I made a comment when... Darren sent the events to the chat group saying another word for rubbish. I said rubbish events, whatever. Um, but with that being said, you know, I've trained really hard. I've been really proud of myself, like sticking to everything I should be hitting. A load more new stuff in, in the training now that's really helped. And it's nice, you know, because I don't feel any pressure. I, I genuinely, I just want to go and have fun, enjoy it. I'm going to go and do a swim with a group of guys before um, in Sheffield, which is amazing. And then getting to see Tom become this back to where he should be, you know, Tom is the strongest man out there, you know, so it's class to see him kind of come back to where he should be, you know. To me, it's a one-man race. Like, Tom will win Britain's Strongest Man, and I'm OK with saying that. Like, I want to win Britain's Strongest Man, of course I do. I want to beat everyone, but I think looking at the events, Tom's just an unstoppable force at the moment. Unfortunately, you know, Luke Richardson had to pull out. He damaged his hamstring and 
um, wish him, you know, a speedy, speedy recovery and looks such a class athlete. Just a really nice guy as well with it all. But uh, like Luke was looking really good. But for me, Tom's just in a different league. When Tom wants to be the strongest man in the world, Tom will be. So uh, you could have, Tom could have 20 coaches, 20 nutritionists, all the best guys in the world. But if Tom's not motivated to become that best strong man, then he won't become that. But now he's got that motivation back. It's going to be really cool competing with him. And, you know, my plan is to go out, smash every event and, you know, come back home and give support Cushy and giving birth to our boy. Like that's that's my only goal in life now is to do that and to raise him as best I can. And of course I want to win these shows, of course I want to be podium. That's the plan. Cheering the podium with Tom at Britain's amazing. You know, that would be the best outcome. But again, I know I'm in I'm I'm in a very privileged position at the moment because, you know, I get to compete in strongman. I still feel I have so much to offer from a strength point of view and it's a very privilege sitting here in a house that you know we have we've built a house we've set up a business we've done all this stuff but it's been through years or decades of hard work you know it's not just happened like I'm sitting here in a privileged position so I can then be free to say do the cold water do this talk about this be open blah 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 so I know I'm in a privileged position I know this version of me 10, 15 years ago, maybe I wouldn't be able to be in that position because I was working offshore. I was doing 15, 16 hours a day away for three months at a time, not ever being able to be home. So I know it's difficult for people watching this or Luke's in a privileged position because he can do all these things. Of course I am. And I'm very happy I'm in this position because I've worked, you know, since I was 18 to get to where I am now, I'm 40 years old this year, so I just want, I want people to be able to like look past that and say, you know what, like, yeah, you're, you're sat there, you're one of the top strong men out there, you've got business, blah, 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 it must be easy for you, and it's not, we still have, I still have the same issues as a lot of people out there, I still worry about money, I still worry about where the business is going to do, or what we're going to compete in, how my son's going to be, how my wife is, how, you know, I still worry about things just because I'm, you know, whatever in, in this place. But it's, I don't know what I'm saying, but <laughs> I went on a wee tangent there. But I just want to reiterate the fact that I'm not sitting here as a know-it-all thinking I know it all because I don't have everything figured out. I don't have much figured out at all. What I do have figured out is, like, I want to love my son and, and want him to know that he's loved beyond measure. Like, that's all. That's all I've figured out. And the rest of life, you just we'll just keep chipping away and trying to figure out different things. But I don't want to come across as a, as I'm trying to say about the cold water or talk about things or do this. or Like, I'm learning every day, you know, every day about different things and being open to learning. I think that's, that's a good thing. Don't take things for granted because... Sometimes we, we get guilty, or I get guilty of that, that I'm a Britain's strongest man. Out of everyone in the UK, I get to go and compete there and, and showcase my strength and, and my passion and my love for what I do. So I need to be thankful for that. And hopefully, going into the cold water, that's what that allows me to do, is be a bit more thankful and um, have more gratitude and love towards things that I do. So just a huge thank you to everyone, because it, it kind of is very humbling when people common and show love and show support to us so you know Tom and I have both trained exceptionally hard and exceptionally well this time um, I really hope that you enjoy the show of course you can watch it live I think it's on official strongman I think it's eight or nine pound I think a month I'm not sure how much it costs but if you can't come to the show you can watch it on official strongman and yeah we're there to put on a show um, so please tune in please show your love and support to not just all myself, but all to, you know, every guy competing because some of my best friends that I've met are are strong men, you know, and, and it really is such a, a unique experience that we get to do. So, but with that being said, I've got some recovery to do, some physio, and then in a couple of days we make our journey down to do battle with the strongest men in the UK. Anyway, thank you for watching. This is... This little room will be full of joy and love and 
hopefully lots of laughter um, in the not so distant future, which I'm very excited about. And who knows what the future will hold. Thank you for watching, guys.